Good morning and welcome to another day at Life at the Waterhole. My name is Taylor McCurdy and I'll be hosting you for the next three hours. I hope you're all very excited. Remember, this is a live and interactive show, so please, pretty please, send through as many questions and comments as you can. And you can do that by uh, using either the YouTube stream chat or even better, heading over to the Wild Earth website and typing your questions in the question box. We have started the day off at Oldonio, which is situated in Kenya and is sandwiched between the Amboseli and also Tsavo, uh, which is quite cool. And we've got some newer characters here today. We've got baboons. Hello, individuals. A whole troop of them. And normally we've only ever had uh, quick views of, of the baboons. So I hope the troop spends a bit more time around here. But if you have just joined us uh, for the first time, let me know in the comments. It'd be uh, great to introduce you to all of the regulars. Yay, the baboons are back. This is quite a nice scene. Another opportunity for you to potentially take a screenshot, save it, share it. And this is a big male baboon. Look at his size. He's huge. The zebra's charging in, chasing everything else away. Oh, wow. This might be also a great opportunity to maybe have a closer look at all these zebras as they have a drink. We probably won't get any gaps. This is actually a dream photograph of mine. Can you imagine it's sitting there in the photographic hide? Well, it doesn't even have to be a photographic hide. Of course, you can just sit peacefully and enjoy. And using a long lens and just filling the entire frame with zebra stripes, zebra heads, zebra legs to get some, some interesting shots. Oh, ha ha, there we go. Elephants, just what we have been waiting for. A few individuals that look like they've already been splishing and splashing in the mud and heading off. Just a few bulls. Not spending too much time around there. Maybe we can have a look and see if there are any more elephants coming down or if that elephant on the right does make its way to the water. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us literally waiting right to the end to grace us with their presence and they know exactly where to go especially that cow on the right she's going straight to where the pump is the zebra, the zebra's bravely coming down again gonna try to find a gap they should be okay on the other side where they've been drinking You see the less experienced elephants might try and have a drink in the murky, muddy waters. that buffalo over there he's got so much mud caked on one horn there you can see how he's sinking into the mud but there's still so much water there that he's not getting stuck so as that water starts to disappear that's when it's going to be come a tricky situation getting that horn stuck in there slamming his head against the ground oh wow just a shake and it's all gone Oh, does that feel nice? 
There we go. That's what I was hoping for. Oh, except you're facing the wrong way, but I can't be greedy. Then I have a little roll around. <laughs> From what I can see right now, look at all, the, you can see the white supercilium, the eyebrow, quite a dark uh, sort of mottling feathers on its wings. I can see a little white piece that kind of extends between the breast and the wing. That's a good uh, feature. And then it's light underneath. So when we are identifying birds, like I said, if you don't have binoculars and that type of thing, it can be a little bit on the tricky side. Um, but, but even just if you have a quick look and you're able to pick up on one or two of those features, it's difficult to get... Um, an understanding of size here but something that i'm specifically looking at so you see it's quite mottled in coloration so there's a couple of them that we can look at we can look at the common sandpiper we can look at a wood sandpiper uh, these are just a, a a couple i'm more inclined to say that it's what are we, oh it's gone now maybe a wood sandpiper I can't really tell the coloration of the legs, but just you can see there's a lot of white flecks in between the darkness now that I can see quite clearly. Spoonbill back in action. Maybe quite happy that the water's been churned up between the elephants and the crocodiles moving around. But also just keeping a close view on those reptilian creatures. See if that crook is going to move it all on the left. No, hold its ground. I can just hear the Birchall's cuckoos going outside, and in the Eastern Cape, they're normally an indicator of rain. Right, but again, it's been just absolutely spectacular. I added a couple of birds to the list. I definitely did. I hope you were able to, too. Here's some interesting crocodile behavior. There's a tail sort of slapping. But uh, unfortunately, we don't have too much time left. Uh, so you'll have to just join us tomorrow. And remember to uh, catch the live drive this afternoon. Oh, wow. Now something seems to be happening. I think there might be a fish there.